Hey, it's Kim Commando today, your daily podcast to keep you up to date with all things digital and beyond. And I'd love to have you be a part of our podcast. You can make an appointment to speak with me. Just head over to commando.com and on the top right, there's a button that says email Kim. Fill that out and that's it. I always like to begin with something really interesting. And wow, I remember when I interned oh, so many years ago at a computer store. Yes, I was paid nada, nothing. Well, get a load of this. I know that times have changed, obviously, but geez, here's what summer interns can make per month at these tech heavy hitters. Stripe and Roblox, $9,000 a month. NVIDIA, Coinbase, and Meta, $8,200 a month. Amazon, a little low here, $7,800 a month. Yeah, summer, a few months away. And just a little PSA, when it gets hot, uh, don't be visiting OnlyFans. All right, every single thing is a tech thing, so get ready to level up that tech game because if you're a new listener to The Kim Commando Show, welcome. I'm, of course, Kim Commando, America's beloved digital goddess here with you. Hey, listen, our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is now open at one 825 5254 is the way to join us. And just a quick reminder, I know you're just too shy to come on a big-time show and podcast. I get that. You can always just drop me your questions over on the website. That's commando.com, of course, and in the upper right-hand corner, there's a link that says email Kim, and I read every single note. All right, every single day I check out at least 30 different websites to make sure that you're up to date on all things digital. And this is part of the show I like to keep you up to date on maybe what's happening in the news. And we're going to start with a really, really sad story. It's a social media horror story that every parent needs to hear from NBC News. It's uh, it's really just horrifying. A 13-year-old boy in Utah hung out at typical websites for kids his age. He was at Discord, that's a chat app, Roblox, the gaming platform, and he liked to go to Twitter. Now, on these websites, the boy was actually being sexually groomed by a 26-year-old adult hundreds of miles away. Now, it started in all private messages and then to full public view on Twitter, yes. Now, one night, the boy's father discovered him missing. His bedroom window was open. The whole room was freezing cold. What happened was the boy was kidnapped by the man accused of grooming him, driven across state lines, and then repeatedly sexually assaulted. Jeez. So now today the parents are in the media demanding, why didn't Twitter find out that this was happening? They went to the feds, the local police. But here's the problem. Why didn't the parents know? Where were the parents? I can't stress to you guys and gals enough. You need to know what the kids in your family are doing online. That's just the bottom line. All right. Meanwhile, let's move to number two on our list of five things. And we're going to go across the pond. It's a modest proposal from the United Kingdom's technology and science minister. When someone on social media publishes something, quote, harmful, they should be thrown in jail. Well, that would certainly get their attention. But there's just one problem. Actually, there's two problems. No, wait, there are millions of problems. Can you spot any of them? All right, in the UK, there's nothing equivalent to our very own First Amendment, guaranteeing freedom of speech in the press. So the minister, who's pretty much like the guy at the president's cabinet, popped off this little gem of an idea as part of their own online safety bill, which is basically a government censorship scheme. So when the government officials begin throwing out terms like harmful when it comes to speech, the first question is harmful to who? So will she and other like her are really saying that if you write something that offends me, I'm going to put you in jail. (laughs) Isn't that nutso? All right, number three on our list, we're going to move over to Netflix, because if you're a Netflix subscriber, the planned password sharing crackdown with anyone outside your household is set to begin in March. But wait, it didn't happen. Well, a year ago, Netflix stunned investors by announcing that for the first time, viewership declined. And then Netflix, they just did a whole knee jerk. It decided that too many, about 100 million subscribers in America, were sharing passwords. Now, completely missing the fact that streaming has become saturated. And remember, Netflix used to say, hey, go ahead and share your password. Because customers simply can't afford all these streaming options. So internally, when the password crackdown was announced, Netflix actually called it a cancel reaction. That is even more customers canceled. Now, this Netflix ad-supported service, it's off to a bad start. Nobody wants it. But even with all the cancellations, Netflix says the crackdown is still coming. Maybe in July, maybe August, or maybe September. Oh, by the way, if you haven't seen Chris Rock's Netflix special, let me tell you, give it a try. It slaps. All right, coming in at number four, let's talk about cryptocurrency, because the following crypto news was reported the other day on CNBC. 
First, you have this tech investor, Chimata Palapiata, who previously said that Bitcoin has replaced gold as an investment, and Bitcoin would eventually climb to 200000 Now states, well, uh, crypto's dead in America. Why? He blames the U.S. government's increased enforcement on crypto scams. That's like complaining crimes down because of increased police protection. Now, the second CNBC reports that Bitcoin will hit $100,000. Hmm. Both can be correct, <laughs> right? Uh, the bottom line, when it comes to crypto investing, predictions are all over the board. And if you are going to invest right now, only invest money that you're willing to throw away and burn in the trash. And finally, this coming in at number five, every June, Apple holds its Worldwide Developers Conference. It's a big deal. It's a place where Apple reveals the newest operating systems that are also a preview to all the hardware announced in the fall, just in time for holiday gift giving. Coincidence? I don't think so. But this is why you shouldn't buy certain Apple products at this very moment. There are so many rumors floating around that Apple is set to launch their own VR slash AR goggles, glasses. And like the Apple car, I'm going to believe it when I see it. But you really should hold off buying a new iPhone, an iPad, because let me tell you, an iOS also requires upgraded hardware. Now, what about MacBooks? Definitely a time not to buy one of those. I expect to see some major updates across the entire MacBook product line since now Apple is still in full production when, and since Apple is now in full production swing with their own processors. So I think we're going to see a brand new 15-inch MacBook Air, an updated 13-inch Air, and a 13-inch MacBook Pro. What that means is that older models' prices, they're going to come down to score. All right, here's one for you. How many Apple engineers does it take to change a light bulb? None. <laughs> they no longer make that socket, and you have to buy a new house. How true is that? All right, I've got so much to pass along. Uh, we're going to talk about how you can make money renting your car. Oh, and this is a fabulous tip. I bet you never thought about this. Where you live can often dictate what price that you see online. So if you live in a pricey neighborhood of Chicago or Beverly Hills, then you may see higher prices than if you live, say, in Bloomington, Illinois, or maybe you lived in Portland, Oregon. So I'm going to tell you how you can fake your location. And then later on, a really important security tip about your firewall. I mean, is it turned on and is it really working? Well, how will you know? Oh, and one more thing I'm going to pass along, too, is about how you can get a copy of what Apple knows and what they're tracking all about you. I know Apple comes out and says, oh, we are so privacy focused. Mm, let's just put them to the test. And of course, you have me and of course, all of our phone calls from coast to coast here on Kim Commando Today. This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV, the Kia EV9. With available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults. With zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute. And available lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. All right, uh, before we get this show started, I just want to say a huge thank you. Wow, all the great feedback. I checked this morning, we had over 17,100 thumbs up. And we had like 600 thumbs down, which isn't a bad ratio when you think about it. And I'm talking about our new and improved Commando 2.0 newsletters. And so if you used to get our newsletters in the past and you're like, oh gosh, I don't like them because it's so many ads. Mm, I understood that. Well, we have totally revamped them changed them up, and everybody's loving them. Well, except for those 600 people, but then the 17,000 people, they're saying it's fantastic. So I'm going to go with those odds again. Over 400,000 people are getting our newsletters every single day. So that means that you should too. So how do you sign up? Really simple. Head over to getkim.com. Once again, that's getkim.com. And you can unsubscribe at any time, and it comes with our spam-free guarantee, by the way. And again, that's getkim.com. You're just going to love them and try them. And if you're already getting, getting the newsletters, you know what I'm talking about. Make sure that you tell a couple of people about them because we need to spread the knowledge that everybody needs to be tech aware and tech safe. Once again, that's getkim.com. Nick in Des Moines, Iowa. Hi there, Nick. Oh, I've got a question for you. Uh, I'm chairman of the State Bars Ethics Committee, and we have an ongoing 
debate regarding the use of the cloud to facilitate communication, exchange of correspondence, documents, and so forth uh, between clients Mm -hmm. and lawyers. Uh, The debate seems to be between younger lawyers that see no problem whatsoever in storing this information in the cloud and older lawyers that say, wait a minute, you know, this is our client's confidential information and we have to have some assurance that the, the communication will be protected. As the debate went on, I said, wait, I can resolve this i'm going to call the digital goddess i'm sure she can give us some guidance in this regard basically the only guidance we get kim is we have to use reasonable care to protect the client's information now we have three -hmm. different levels of protection that we need to afford one is basic confidentiality Okay. Uh, another is a higher level that you and I would probably call secret information. And of course, the, the, the top level is attorney client privilege from my lips to your ears, that type of thing. So the, the level right. of protection varies regarding the nature of the correspondence. But there's concern that a lot of the end user agreements uh, uh, that you see for cloud storage allows the, uh, the company to actually get in and, act- and look at the information. Now, that, of course, violates all rules of confidentiality, privilege, the seal of the privilege, and that type of thing. So that's the debate. Can you help us? Well, I'm not a lawyer, and I don't play one on the (laughs) Internet or on radio. We we can handle the lawyer (laughs) thing. We need the digital goddess. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, Let's start start at the bottom. Okay. So let's say law firms have in-house servers then, of course, we have to make sure that those are, in fact, locked down and that they they can't be penetrated by hackers, malware, scammers, you know, fill in the blank, right? right. Because imagine there's, I'm sure there's a lot of valuable data on there that somebody might want to get their hands on. So quite often, cloud storage, they may have more resources and expertise than some law firms to devote to security measures, because they just that's what their job is. Right. Sure, Instead of just, sure. oh, like, here's my here's my nephew. He uh, he's an I.T. guy, you know, or whatever it may be. Um, now, the cloud company, you know, it's it's a valid concern because they do in their terms and conditions, which I'm sure you read, but nobody else has ever read in the entire <laughs> world, is that they they have to turn over the data in response to a legal request. Right. A subpoena, a sure. court order, a search warrant. Um, now, depending on what data it is, it's the type of data that's being requested, the reason for request. But then I'm sure, you know, you have something called the Stored Communications Act that provides the rules for all of this. Okay. If it is in the cloud and conceptually, if somebody had enough resources, they could, in fact, go get it. And I understand the reluctance to put all this confidential information in the cloud. But I think that, in in my opinion, I think that you'd probably be best served so long as everybody who has who has access to that folder storage or whatever it is that they that they are also vetted in a high place, so that this way we're not just giving the keys to the kingdom to just about anybody. Now you've got big names like this: Amazon, Google. Uh, and I will tell you, in the interest of full disclosure, Nick, is that I own a small, small, tiny, tiny, I think I probably own the, the cup holder at this company called Wasabi because I invested <laughs> in them uh, many years ago. Uh, are you familiar with the company Carbonite? Yes, yes. Okay. Well, quick story about Carbonite is that David Friend came out when he started Carbonite came out to Phoenix, and he said, you know, I want to give you uh, $25,000, and I want you to help me advertise Carbonite. And we're just getting off the ground. And I said to Dave, you know what, Dave, take your money, and I want you to go back to Boston, because I don't want to take your money, because if I take your $25,000, you're never going to talk to me again, because you might as well just go on the street and give it to anybody who's walking by, because that's just not enough money. And because of that, he came back later and subsequently over time, he was spending a lot of money, like, you know, seven figures with us a year. And so over that time, I became friends with David Friend. 
And so he said to me, I'm going to start a cloud storage company. And I said, I want in. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you did good with Carbonite. And so he owns Wasabi. Uh, and they are going direct competition with Amazon. What I'd like to do is to me, and you don't have to buy Wasabi, but I'd like to put you in touch with him. And he can explain to you better the ins and outs of of how the data is stored and from his perspective and on how many different servers it's replicated on. And so that this way, I think if you could have a technical overview, I think that would help you make that decision. Right. That'd be tremendous help because we have to ensure that our communication with our client is confidential and it stays secure. I mean, some of this is pretty high level <laughs> information and then we just simply cannot afford the risk that our client would run sure. if we store it in the cloud you know we talked about situations like well do you, how do you encrypt it and and at the same time we got to be able to facilitate communications i mean the use of of uh, information technology and the transmission of it is good and our clients like it uh, but if it gets too mm -hmm. cumbersome and confusing they won't use it Exactly. And this is a problem with encryption keys and that type of thing. And, and you know, you used, you used three words that were really important to me. Exercise reasonable care. And I think, you yes. know, what is reasonable, and that goes back, in, uh, the, what is reasonable? What's reasonable to me may not be reasonable to you. But I, but I do understand what you're saying. So what I'd like to do is to, uh, to put this with David, and I'll, I'll facilitate that. Just make sure I have your email address. I'll do a whole email introduction. Right. And then okay. what I'd like you to do, Nick, is I would like you to call me back, okay? And then let me know what your decision is. All right, let's move on and talk about how you can make money by renting your very own car. So if your car is just sitting in your garage or your driveway, you might want to consider renting it out to tourists or just someone who needs a car for a side hustle. It's a good way to make money by doing nothing at all. I recently rented a car for a few days in Miami. And rather going through the traditional route, I rented a car at the airport Rather than going the traditional route of renting a car at the airport, I actually used a service called Turo. And the car was delivered to my hotel. It was so clean, both inside and out. It was cheaper a day than those big-name car rental companies. So if you list your car for rent on Turo, you get to keep anywhere from 60 to 90% of the fees collected, depending on the insurance car protection plan that you actually select. Now, another site that works like Turo is called Get Around. And next, Uber drivers. They need a fairly recent car. And if you have one that works, hire driver is for you. Uh, your take is 75 to 85% of the car's rental fee. Now, if you missed any of those sites, we have them all over at commando.com. Just search for Make Money With My Car. All right, coming up, how you can fake your location to get the lowest prices online. We have more of your fantastic phone calls. And, of course, you have me, Kim Commando. If you only have a 401k, you're not getting the most for retirement. Wait, what? Add a Robinhood IRA on top, then they'll boost it by 3%. You can do that? And if you transfer in any retirement account, you get 3% on top of that. Is there a limit to the match? No limit. Robinhood Gold gets you the biggest contribution match of any IRA on the market. Sign up for Robinhood Gold at Robinhood.com slash boost by April 30th. Subscription fees apply. Investing involves risk. 3% match requires gold for one year from first match. Must keep IRA for five years. Match on transfers subject to additional terms and conditions. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC. Wait, I have so much to squeeze in for the rest of the show. We're going to talk about how you can make sure that your firewall is working and how you can fake your location so you can get better prices online. And before I go back to all of your great phone calls, let's talk about Apple. If you use an iPhone, an iPad, an iMac, an iPod, a MacBook, Apple TV, uh, you have a watch or another Apple product, the company is collecting a lot of data about you. Now, here's the insider secret to getting a copy of all that Apple tracks about you. And then you can also have a chance to correct any mistakes that they have. So here's just a short list of what Apple has. Your Apple ID account details, of course, and your sign-in records. You'd expect that. Data that you store with iCloud, such as your contacts, your calendars, your notes, your bookmarks, uh, reminders, email, photos, videos, and documents. Yeah, it's a lot. Your app usage information, anything that you've purchased or downloaded from the App Store, the iTunes Store, uh, Apple TV, Apple Books, as well as your browsing history in those stores. They have records of your Apple retail store and support transactions. So to get a copy of all of this, and if you've ever never done it, 
Um, it's just interesting for you to know and to see this is the information that you're giving away. Head to this special address. It's privacy.apple.com. That address, privacy.apple.com. Pretty easy to remember, privacy.apple.com. Tammy in Portland, Oregon. Hi there, Tammy. Thank you very much. Hey, I love listening to the show when I can catch it. Um, my question is with uh, legitimate, and I understand this may be a little out of your wheelhouse, but legitimate work from home remote opportunities. Um, and what did you do before? What, and what are you looking to do now? Um, I've got years of purchasing and logistics and um, the inventory data entry assisting across you know, many different departments that were, you know, my home department, meaning accounting and records and that mm -hmm. type of thing. And then um, what industry was that in? Um, that was in aviation. Okay. All right. So you were doing uh, materials, logistics, accounting, all kinds of stuff in the aviation industry. So, so your first step, and the good news is, Tammy, that a lot of companies – even after COVID, they're offering hybrid or full work at home opportunities. Okay. So your first step is to look at companies who you know, companies that you're familiar with, and you go into their career section or you go or you checked out or you check out their LinkedIn.com profile page. And that's where many companies are listing any opportunities that they have for that they have available remotely uh, or under that hybrid situation. Now, I will tell you that um, while you're on hold, I did a search for remote aviation material logistics search because uh, you also sent me an email. I remember that. And I did find, for example, like at Air Aviation, uh, there's a remote position there, Collins Aerospace, uh, uh, Gulfstream, by the way, uh, Aerospace Corporation, big one. And so so we're going to send you a link to, to the jobs that I found. But just keep in mind that you know, there are a lot of scams out there, and, I, and I'm so glad that you called because you used the word legitimate, <laughs> okay? So anytime you run across a job where they're asking you a lot of personal details, you've never heard of the company, you look at the website, it kind of looks okay, uh, you check out Glassdoor, maybe they don't have any reviews there or they have one review, is that you have to be really, really careful. Uh, do not give anybody any money when you apply for a job or if somebody says, we're going to give you money to go buy your own computer, and then you get the check, and it's like $6,000, or the wire, or the Venmo, whatever it may be, and then they say, oh, you know what, we're so sorry, we went to send you $600, can you send us back the $5,400, and you're like, oh, sure, I'll send that back to you, because you seem like a nice person, and then meanwhile, you're going to be out the $5,400, so just Remember, always be skeptical, always be skeptical and just look at those big names, those companies, no matter what industry that you're in. This is a very specific industry. So whether maybe you're in the construction industry, the farming, whatever it may be, stick with the big companies, look at their LinkedIn.com uh, profiles, and then you can check out opportunities on Indeed, on, again, LinkedIn. They also have a lot of opportunities there. And just make sure that you vet every every opportunity. But, you know, there's contractor positions. There's one that I see at Collins. Uh, they say they offer health insurance, dental insurance, some good things like that. So, you know, the opportunities are there. You just have to be able to go find them. And again, be very, very careful. Now, Tammy, if you run across something and you're thinking, mm, I'm not sure if this is legit, you can always send it to me and I'll be happy to vet it for you and let you know what I think. You know, you don't have to come on the air. I'm happy to just do that on the side for you. And again, thank you for your call. All right. In real life, the pricier the neighborhood, the more expensive the grocery store. We all know this. But guess what? So many websites work the same way. Now, only one in three Americans know that online shops will use your device's location to raise and lower prices on their products. That's a really big number. Okay, That means that two-thirds of Americans, they have no idea that this practice is happening. So depending on where you live, you could get the short end of the stick with deals. But there are ways to navigate around this. Okay, number one, you can use a VPN and you're going to change your virtual location to one that you suspect may get lower prices on products. And then you buy through there and you can ship to your same home address. Now, I use ExpressVPN and I've recommended it for so many years. Again, that's expressvpn.com slash Kim. You're going to actually get three months free, by the way. 
All right, next what you can do is compare prices online. Uh, sites like Price Grabber and Google Shopping make it really easy to take a look at cost of items all over the web. And number three, track the prices on the products that you want. Now, if you are using Chrome, Keepa is a really good, powerful extension. It keeps tabs on price history charts on the items that you want on Amazon. But if you don't want to use an extension on Chrome, there's another site, and they also have an app. It's called Camel Camel Camel. So easy to use, right? All you do is you take the URL of whatever product that you want to buy on Amazon, and then you say, hey, when the price goes down by a dollar, by $10 or 50 cents or whatever you want, is that you will get an automatic notification that that price is at the price that you are willing to pay for it. Again, that's camel, camel, camel. I, know, I don't know why the Geeks of the Week name some of these things like that, but that's just it. Uh, camel, camel, camel. I use it all the time. You know, when I was a little kid, I thought this little piggy went to market meant that the piggy went shopping. Mm, it doesn't. All right. If you need some links to Camel, 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 or you want more information about how to fake your location with a VPN, just hit commando.com, use the search box, and that little tip is going to pop right up for you. All right. Still to come, we have so many more of your phone calls and also a fabulous tip that maybe you've never thought of checking. Is the firewall on your system actually working and doing its job? You'll know the answer if you stay right here on Kim Commando today. Let me tell you about a revolutionary new mobile voicemail app. If you've got a business, your voicemail is probably filled with messages from customers. Often the messages don't contain all the details you need. But what if you were able to get visual information from your callers? That's something you can't do with a traditional audio voicemail box, but you can with Fillmore Productions Video Voicemail. With Fillmore Productions Video Voicemail, callers receive a link to download the mobile app. There, they can view important details about your business, watch videos about what you have to offer, and then leave you a video message. Actors and musicians can showcase what they do, and callers to medical practices or repair shops can report their issues visually. There are so many things that video voicemail can do for a business that makes audio voicemail a thing of the past. Discover what video voicemail can do for your business. Visit GetVideoVoicemail.com. That's GetVideoVoicemail.com. That's GetVideoVoicemail.com. Jim in Boise, Idaho. Hi there, Jim. Well, you know, I am on a committee in our class reunion, 50th class reunions coming up, and we need to try to get, you know, find people and, and encourage them to come. And Saturday mm -hmm. I was listening to your show, and I thought, I bet Kim can help me. <laughs> Good. That's great. <laughs> That's awesome. So, uh, boy, 50 years. Congratulations. And so are you looking to find all these people or are you looking to put together a site to disseminate information, take RSVPs? Is that kind of the angle where you're headed? Yes, more a site to disseminate information. And ideally, it'd be nice to have a secure um, registration type thing. Um Beautiful. But, you know, there aren't as many people on Facebook as there used to be, and so we're trying to expand out into a to a website. Okay. Um, well, a couple of ways you can go. Uh, there's a website called Wix.com, mm -hmm. and they have free and paid templates, and it really is like drag and drop to build a website. Super easy to use. You don't need to be like a pocket protector HTML nerd in order to do this, right? That's uh, good. And they, then they, they have some some features that you can add to your website. They do have an event calendar, photo gallery, contact forms, good things like that. Um, if you wanted to make it a little bit more robust, is the word, uh, mm -hmm. you'd use maybe WordPress, and that's a website platform. It's free. It's open source. Uh, they also have free and paid templates, and they've got a lot of plugins, uh, like an RSVP system. As another completely different option, so let's say we, we don't want to do a website, mm -hmm. is I just wanted to look at this website called Eventbrite, and that's event, B-R-I-T-E. And what I'm thinking is this just might be like the total easy way out <laughs> is that you create an event page, and there you can put uh, who's coming and who we're looking for, and there's... Um, you can talk about the venue and pictures, and then it also gives you a good way to manage reservations. 
And so, uh, and, and so you don't necessarily maybe need a website as maybe just use Eventbrite. But if you do decide to build a website, you can incorporate Eventbrite into the website itself. Uh, the other one I might want, you know, the other one you should check out is just um, RSVP iFi, <laughs> like RSVP IFY, like um, so Eventbrite and RSVP IFY. Those might be some just really quick ways for you to get something on the internet and say, hey, we're going to have this 50th reunion. We want everybody to come and tell everybody who you know. And again, use that or Wix or um, WordPress. And Jim, uh, thanks for your call today. And hopefully I helped you out. All right, let's see. Oh, we have time. Uh, back to the phones we go. Nancy in Georgetown, South Carolina. Hi there, Nancy. I have an iPhone 12. I've had it for a while, and I'm kind of sort of stuck on the 8. The 8 to me was easier. But with the 12, my battery seems to run out super easy. Can you tell me what I can do to be able to extend the length of time before my battery runs out. Because everybody at work has got tunes playing and stuff like that. Like mine runs out within the first hour. Oh my gosh, I really? Like to know how to better, how to, how to, yeah, how to better use my phone. Cause it's like, I leave it charging on my, I get it the next morning and I take it to work. And within an hour of having it turned on, it's kind of, okay, it's dead. So I'm doing something hmm. wrong. I just don't know what. Well, you know, first of all, I want to make sure what we're going to do is we're, I'm going to give you the steps, Nancy. Uh, I want to make sure that the battery health on that phone is good uh, because okay. there's, there's no reason why the phone should just be dying after an hour. It may not be anything that you're doing. It may just be you've got some type of defect uh, and because an hour is just not a long time if it's been charging overnight. But let's say there's nothing wrong with the uh, the health of the battery. Is if it's uh, if you do if it's still man, I don't know if it's still covered under Apple Care. You might want to check with that because sometimes you can take it into Apple and they'll go ahead and give you a new phone too if they find anything wrong with the uh, the battery itself. But let's say that everything all does check out, everything's all honky dory. Well, your iPhone 12 is something called low power mode, and that reduces power consumption. So uh, maybe apps that are are in the background, refreshing, automatic downloads, any type of visual effects. And so you can go into low power mode by going to settings, battery, and then low power mode. And by the way, settings, battery, that's where you'll find that option for battery health. You also want to make sure that you don't have a lot of things, that, as I mentioned, any apps that are running in the background. And you can also check that within the settings itself. So let's say that everything checks out Hockey Dory. The there are no apps running and the battery's great and you're still losing power. Then what you want to do is get a really nice case for this iPhone 12 that has a battery built in. And so it will bring the phone up to 110% charge when with this special case. It's going to be a little bit bigger on the phone, uh, but they're about $40. But what's nice about these battery charging cases is that they're wireless. And so what that means is that if you have your AirPods and they're running low too, is you can just drop those bad boys right on that case on the back of the iPhone and then they get charged up as well. So hang on the line, Nancy. Uh, we're going to send you a link to how to check that low power mode, battery health, as well as a link to a really nifty battery case, which I'll tell you, it's just a smoking great idea in case you're like Nancy and you're just running out of juice at the worst time when you're trying to listen to some music at work. And Nancy, thank you for your call. Hey, by the way, when you do go to settings and battery, everything that you see there, the activity appears for the last 24 hours and up to the last 10 days. And so you're going to get some suggestions on how you can get better battery life. And also tells you the last time that you charged it. But be sure that you look at this graph. There's the battery level graph in the last 24 hours. It shows you the battery level, the charging intervals, and then also maybe when your phone was in low power mode or when the battery was critically low. And they have the same type of graph for the last 10 days. And they also have an activity graph. There's just so much information that you can see right in here about your phone's battery, even activity by the app. So if you've never, ever taken a look at that, just go into settings and go to battery and then go to battery health. I know it's not the most exciting topic, but it's something that we all need to know. Ooh, batteries. Yeah, that's going to keep them coming. Okay, you know that your Windows PC or Mac, it has terrific built-in security tools, and it's all there to make sure that hackers can't steal anything from you, maybe get a copy of your passwords. The problem is, is that it's actually up to you to make sure that this one very important tool is turned on and that it's actually working. Okay, so this is a really important tip about your system's firewall. 
Now, for starters, what exactly does the firewall do? Okay, the firewall monitors the files, the email, website pages, and more coming to you that you see on your system. Now, the geeks of the week, we all call this traffic. So we're going to use this in a sentence. The, mo the firewall monitors the traffic, that word again, leaving your computer. So it's super important to make sure that your firewall is actually working. First, for our Windows listeners, you're going to search your system for something that's called Windows Defender Firewall. And in the settings, I want you to make sure that it's turned on. Now, if you're using a Mac, you're going to use Spotlight and search for the word Firewall. Okay, so again, Windows, you're going to search for Windows Defender Firewall. And then if you're on a Mac, you're just going to use the word Firewall. Now, you have to remember that a firewall is just a small part of your computer's entire security setup. So you want to make sure that you always get any type of system updates. You want to use some good antivirus software like Total AV that blocks malware. And by the way, Total AV, if you go to Protect with Kim, you get like 85% off, just some crazy deal. So that's Protect with Kim. All right, if you laughed, if you groaned, if you learned just one thing, I want you to make sure that you tell three friends about the Kim Commando Show and our podcast because everyone needs more tech smarts and you can find me at commando.com. This program is a copyrighted production of Westar Multimedia Entertainment and protected by the copyright laws. Any rebroadcast or use of this program for commercial, business, economic, or financial purposes without the written permission of Westar Multimedia Entertainment is strictly prohibited. Listen up. I won't sugarcoat it. This is the longest cold flu and allergy season we've ever seen, but we're not alone. We've got Instacart. Sure, you may be a coughing snot faucet who just wants mommy, but you're not giving up! Not when cold medicine, fragrant herbal teas, and honey shaped like bears can be delivered through Instacart in as fast as 30 minutes! Now let's go win the sick playoffs! Daddy, I just want my soup. Oh, sorry, Sport App says it'll be here in, in a few minutes. Hm. Instacart for the win. Okay, we may have gone a little barbecue crazy at Sonic. We BBQified not one, but three iconic menu items. But I mean, come on, can you really blame us for going slightly overboard? When you add smoked pulled pork and tangy cherry wood smoke sauce to a melty cheeseburger, a brioche topped barbecue sandwich, and crispy, cheesy tachos, you'd be crazy not to go crazy. Pulled pork barbecue, now at Sonic. Limited time only at participating Sonic drive-ins.